Hi there, it's Mary Charlson here from 5minutemarketing.com coming at you with some more marketing tips. You know, I love the intersection of sociology, business, and history, often triangulating historical data and taking a look at current trends can re lead to some really interesting observations and forecasting as we move forward. During this pandemic and arguing the pandemic that drags on and on, we've seen massive shifts in consumer behavior. But I think there's some really interesting stuff that's happening right now that will help us anticipate what to you know, kind of look forward to as we're shifting into the tail end, let's hope, of the pandemic and moving forward. You know, a friend uh, sent me a recent article from The Economist to, to read. She's, people are always sending me stuff, uh, knowing that this is, you know, kind of, kind of thing that really kind of gets me excited. But it was called The Long Goodbye to COVID. And it also, it, it had some, you know, some things around uh, a global normalcy index, which tracked the kind of the behaviors across countries and how they have changed and shifted and comparing it to pre-pandemic levels. And so it's kind of an interesting kind of study. And then it also took a look at some past trends and things that have happened in past pandemics. And so what kind of came out of this was this, there's been sort of three kind of shifts, which have typically followed past pandemics. Um, the first one is the collective threat often prompts uh, the growth of state power. I would argue we've we've certainly seen that happen with, um, you know, with, with uh, lockdowns, with uh, mandated vaccines or vaccine passports, you know, masking, you know, various behaviors that uh, that have and and also government aid packages. So definitely, we've seen a collective threat uh, prompting the growth of state power. Um, the second trend was overturning of, of daily life often leads to the search for meaning. We've certainly seen that over the last year or so people kind of uh, looking reevaluating their life where they live where they work, you know, it does their work bring them meaning. Um, you know, they found themselves uh, meditating, you know, moving to you know, to um, spaces where they give them larger homes uh, further out from the city, you know, really kind of searching for what it is that kind of kind of gets them excited. And that's the second trend. And, and we absolutely have seen that. The third one is the possible death that, that plagues uh, pandemics bring about um, cause people to have a lot of caution, you know, while the disease is raging, but it often spurs audacity once the threat passes. And that's the one that gets me really excited. You know, it it fascinates me. Um, and, and if we take a look through history, we can sort of see this happening. You know, the Black Plague killed one third of workers in Europe. Um, but from that, you know, innovations like the printing press came about simply because there weren't enough people to be scribes to be able to kind of, you know, to be able to write all of these things and distribute it. You know, explorers set off for the new world during that time. Um, you know, what could be more risky than actually, you know, you, know, you get on a boat, you sail off to a new world or, you know, stay at home and, and risk being around uh, the plague. So we had a lot of exploration. During the Spanish flu in 1918, we saw similar kind of lockdowns of society and schools and masking and protesting. And, um, and all of that eventually led to over 100 million deaths before it abated. And since the end of that Spanish flu kind of uh, collided with the end of World War I, we had a bit of a double whammy. And following that, ushered in the Roaring Twenties, which saw a tremendous number of business startups flourishing. We had women's rights emerging, um, and it really ushered in a, an era of a vibrant creative arts and music scene. So, you know, while it's clear right now that, you know, the last phase of the pandemic is, let's face it, going to be frankly drawn out, um, you know, until we get more vaccines in arms on a global scale, we're going to have to kind of live with this whole thing, um, you know, until it, it will probably just end up being kind of a seasonal thing that we'll be dealing with, but, and we'll just have to kind of learn to, uh, you know, to, to deal with things. Um, hopefully, uh, as as the real threat passes, as more people are vaccinated, but not to get uh, down down that rabbit hole. But you know, if we look closely, um, 
a lot of stuff around that, this third kind of trend around audacity, risk, and innovation, a lot of it has actually already arrived. Um, I've got speaker friends who, you know, spent the last year not being able to speak live on stages. Uh, they, they, they wrote books, they created, and now they're out and speaking to their audiences. Um, you know, we have... Um, Let's see, we've I mean, global innovation uh, in the IT industry. Uh, you know, the it, basically IT startups grew by 20% in 2020 compared to 2019. And we saw a lot of other industries flourish, meeting new consumer needs that came up during the pandemic. Um, this past summer, we've seen base, kind of a historical space race. We had, you know, Richard. Branson from Virgin, Jeff Bezos from Google, uh, launching into space, you know, intended to eventually commercialize uh, citizen travel to space. And just today, the day that I'm filming this, we witnessed September 15th, 2021, we've witnessed the first all civilian crew launching into space aboard SpaceX uh, rocket ship, which is the project of Elon Musk, um, you know, the founder of Tesla. And this is uh, this is happening, and this is you know this is audacity. It's innovation. Yes, it's been it's been working towards, but it's I don't think it's any it's any mystery that it happens to be kind of popping up and coming to fruition at this particular time in history. The um, you know this you know likewise artificial intelligence you know enhanced reality genetic engineering are no longer subjects of 1970s kind of futuristic comic books uh, they're real and they're here you know the digital revolution really kind of seems to only been accelerated by the the pandemic so question for us is as marketers is you know how will audacity play out in consumer behavior you know Time will tell, but we're seeing early signs of it in the travel industry, which has been hit really, really hard during the pandemic. But we're seeing, you know, those with a higher tolerance for risk navigating trips, you know, often having fabulous times. I, I entered a, interviewed a, a fellow recently who had been on an African safari, um, you know, wasn't potentially the easiest thing to accomplish during a pandemic, but it was possible. And, you know, it's that kind of, you know, audacious behavior, which we're starting to see emerge in what I would call with, within some of the early adopters. Um, a recent Forbes article talked about, you know, the number of people, a large number of Americans uh, looking to quit their jobs in record numbers. You know, often it's a reflection of, you know, um, you know, looking at their work in the pandemic, looking for something that brought them meaning, uh, but also seeking jobs with better opportunity and more flexibility. And so these are kind of kind of crazy audacious behaviors, which we're starting to see in some of the early adopters to this. So, you know, what does audacity look like for consumers? Okay, audacity makes big changes and decisions quickly. Audacity spends money freely to get what it really wants. Audacity doesn't put off the future. It lives it today. Audacity dares to dream big. Well, let's just put a rocket and let's take citizens of the world. Let's take them up to up outer space, right? That's an ad audacious move. Um, audacity takes risk, calculated risk, but it takes risks. Audacity creates and innovates. And finally, audacity doesn't care what others think. So the question for you is this, how might these broad sweeping consumer behaviors impact your business? You know, how might you leverage the sentiment around audacity in your marketing and your communications? And how can you capitalize on this right now with the early adapters, knowing full well that the balance of consumers will likely fall in over time in this next year or so? So that's what I've got for you this week for you to think about. Um, thanks again for watching 5-Minute Marketing Tips, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.